Fantastic. Okay, so um, I'm Julia Brenchley. I work at Altia College. I've been doing the pilot for two years. I'm the pilot lead for the prayers, so the physics, earth and space science here. Um, so I'm going to talk about, well, for the physics, primarily what we did last year, because what we did the year before was thrown out and we started again last year. So actually, what we'd done the previous year was of absolutely no help at all. <laughs> um, and with me is... Kia ora, and my name is Emma Howden. I am teacher in charge of chemistry at Green Bay High School in um, West Auckland. And I was teacher in charge of the PES pilot at our school last year. Um, so just as background for those who don't know, as a pilot school, we had to do all four standards in a course. So PES 1.1 to 1.4. And today we're talking about the two physics standards, which are 1.2, the investigation, and 1.4, the external um, on energy. And my school joined the PES pilot um last year so we didn't do the first year where it was quite the standard was quite different um we joined last year but we've also been doing the general science pilot for the um the all three years that that was running the NOS standards uh, Where yes. are the ministries uh school on a pedestal because last year we ran all of our level ones, we ran all the pilots. Yeah. I, okay. Yes, that must have been fun <laughs> as a school. Um, cool. Okay, um, I, I'm up first. So the first standard we're going to talk about, we're basically going to talk about the internal and then we'll pause, have questions and talk about the external and then questions again. Um, so if you do have any questions, absolutely put them in the chat. Um, happy to potentially interrupt as that's relevant at the time. Otherwise, we'll take them at the end and try and answer as best we can. Um, I think our goal is to talk about what we did, but also talk about what we're doing differently this year in terms of what did work, what didn't work um, to help you guys the most. So... PS 1.2 is um, demonstrate understanding of physical phenomena. And we as pilot schools had to pick one of the assessments that is on the NZQA website. So my school picked Waka Hauroa, um, which was looking at, at, oops, at some kind of motion um, and sailing. So in terms of preparation at our school, we essentially sat with um, a pretty traditional motion and forces unit, um, but we made it as practical as we could, knowing that our students by and had to be able to completely plan and do their own assessment, um, their own investigation for this in the assessment. So we were really practical, um, lots of um, hands-on observations and then sort of clarifying the ideas in class. Um, this year we're including even more um, sort of actual investigation rather than recipe investigations where they follow the steps. We're trying to get our students thinking about the variables that are going to affect an investigation. And the reason we're doing a focus on that, even though the investigation itself is not assessed in 1.2, is that we've had a little bit of pushback from our level two physics teachers in terms of their preparation for investigation skills. We basically ran out of time last year in and around piloting. You might hear that as a theme um, coming across. And so we are including more of that um, this year in our preparation in previous units as well as in that motion teaching unit. Um, and then something that we really struggled with when we got to the assessment was authenticity and that the students, despite the number of times you tell them the graph is process data so it's individual work you cannot do the graph as a group and um, they all basically all did graphs as a group um not exclusively but quite a few of them and so we've included a unit on organizing data looking at continuous discontinuous data what raw data is what process data and really emphasizing that their process data is part of their assessment so they have to be doing the processing of data individually and to get them understanding that a bit more clearly, 
fingers crossed. Don't know if it's going to work, but we're hopeful. Um, we're really teaching what data organization is, definitions for numerical data versus observational data, qualitative, qualitative, and really getting into um, how to work out what kind of graph they need to be making depending on what their data is. Um, so that is, that's kind of how we prepared um, our students for this assessment. All right, so I'm a physics teacher by trade. So I literally walked into this and went, oh, in theory, we don't really need to do anything other than do a practical, a bit like the one we want to do. And then they can just do it again. But we, and I was like, no, nah. they need to know mechanics for level two. Uh, they've traditionally always needed to know mechanics. In GCSE, they need to know mechanics. In old level one, they used to need no, no mechanics. So we teach mechanics and we do the whole bit. Um, yes, we make it quite practical and we um, we do a lot of like little practicals and then maybe we get them to think about a, a section uh, like, um, OK, this was a silly little practical about pulling blocks along the floor to see what uh, the friction is. Um, OK, so uh, uh, tell uh, get, write an evaluation. How could we have done this better? Um, so little things like that, because these are the things that uh, they are looking at and marking and in the reality as well. The other thing we did was we really, really focused hard on drawing graphs. That's a bugbear of mine. We're a BYOD school and we get kids and they've never hand drawn a graph. They have used to just putting it into a spreadsheet and it does it for them. And um, in level two, we say they have to hand draw their graphs. So I went, well, in level one, we're going to make them hand draw their graphs. That solves your authenticity problem as well, because they've all got to do their own graph by hand and take a picture and then put it into their report. Um, that takes a surprisingly long amount of time when they don't really know how to draw graphs. Um, so we do a lot of drawing graphs. OK, now tell us what that data tells you. What are the trend lines on the graph showing you? Now try and use some physics to explain it. So that's sort of the bread and butter of what's actually getting marked for the practical. Um, we have done this sort of practical thing before. So unlike Emma, I was prepared for the setup. So we do two practice practicals beforehand. We do a really simple Hooke's Law one. And I say to them, I'm not interested in the practical because it's really simple. You're just hanging masses off a spring and you're measuring the extension. What I'm interested in is the write-up. And we give them a um, an IB middle years program template, which literally goes aim, hypothesis, uh, independent variable, dependent variable, control variables, the whole bit all the way through proper old style report writing. Um, and they fill it in. We go and we talk about how much detail you need in each section. They do it, the practical, they draw, they do their table, they hand draw their graph, and then they do the write-up, they do the conclusion, what your graph is telling you, now explain the physics behind it, and they do the evaluation. And then we, uh, last year, we did as our second one, a sliding a log down a slope. And because last year they were really into this, um, making your practical, modeled on a real life situation. That was the real thing that they were focusing on. Um, this was actually based on a uh, video from Japan I found where every five years, these guys get a massive log <laughs> and they sit on it and slide it down slopes in order to take it to a temple for something, some ritual. So we literally just have little metal bars that we put on meter rulers to do the modeling. Uh, so you can change the angle, you can change what height up the ruler they do it, you can change the mass of the little metal bar. Um, so we do that one, and that's a little bit more free form. Here's your stuff. You've got to come up with what you're going to do. And th this one, we very much modelled exactly how we were going to do the real thing, where we were like, OK, in your groups... We want you to do the variables, think about your control variables and write us a method. Yeah. And once you've got a method, we will read it. And if we're happy with it, you can do the practical. 
So we were still helping at every stage, but we were trying to say, okay, this is like this is going to be how the the real thing works. Um, in actuality, uh, I will talk about uh, the experiment we did um, last year. Uh, we're actually doing the experiment we did last year as our practice this year, and we're going to do the sliding block down a slope as our actual uh, this year, just because our practical was such a mess. Um, so we uh, just swap them around. We think that this will be just as good. Mm, and that's me on. So tell us about your assessment. Cool. So we are very lucky to have an absolutely amazing um, family at our school. Our science technician's husband built us 45 little land yachts like this. Um, the bases were the mast. And so we had Walker. Um, to to um to use and our students then had to design and make sails from excess fabric and a whole range of various sticky things that ended up in all sorts of places um and and that was that was joyful that the cleanup was fun um but we had these um land yachts and we had big fans that were essentially left over the school had purchased them uh, during COVID, when we all came back to class um, as ventilation for um, some of the classrooms. So we had all these giant fans around school, um, you know, pretty big. I don't know what are they, about a metre, almost a metre across, quite crazy large. And so we had these fans and our students had different sail designs. They worked in groups to design different sails and they were looking at how that would impact on the journey of the walker um, purely involving speed and forces um, one aspect that has changed now is that last year's walker hodoa task suggested pressure as a physics context um, if you've ever tried explaining how a sailboat moves using pressure uh, it is not at level six of the curriculum. Um, we had some very confused physics answers trying to talk about P equals F over A, um, getting very confused because as the boat moves away from the fan, the force changes. And it's not just area that's affecting that. It's a very, very complex situation. Although some did talk about high and low pressure systems relatively well. So that was quite nice for them. But um, that has been removed from the standard. Um, so if you are looking at the Waka Hodua task or anything similar to that, um, just don't say that pressure is a physics concept for this um, because it, it certainly is in reality, but it is not at level six of the curriculum. Um, so we're not doing, um, we're doing the same task, but with different physics ideas this year. Um, we... We used quite a lot of time for this assessment. Um, it was nine classes. Um, I think one of the classes took 10 classes, um, 10 lessons. But we actually think it was worthwhile. The kids got heaps out of it. Um, and the creative thinkers who weren't necessarily big on physics really loved designing their sales, building something, um, and the freedom to just have at it and play around and make sure it was working and fix the sale and realize oh it's completely off balance and it's just turning a corner immediately and um, all of that problem solving was was really cool so essentially it was two pe two periods two hours for designing and trialing um, and playing around two periods to collect all their data and solve problems and um, we ended up with we've got um like almost two meter sticks that we use for measuring height and other large distances and we ended up using them as tracks to have the walker going in a straight line um, with complications around friction as it rubbed against the side so it's a real life scenario there were lots and lots of things playing around with this um, and then essentially it was five classes to process and write up um, which is a little bit long and I think that was because we really hadn't prepared them properly for that step um, some of them finished a bit sooner than that, but um, some of them took a long time getting underway. And so that's a big part of why we've made that change to explicitly teach 
some of those skills. We're putting in a lot more practice um, in in getting underway and how to work out what to do next. And I think we've got a better idea of what we can and cannot support them with. Um, as teachers, basically anything to do with the investigation itself, tell them if they're on the wrong track um, straight away. It's like, or, or, or very, very heavily prompt at least. Like, oh, oh, I'm thinking, talk to someone else about that. Like, like it's that group doing that you're not doing. Oh, you haven't done any repeats. Oh, maybe repeats is a good idea in physics. Let's see if your data was right by doing it again. Um, and just making sure they're not falling into any um, any too obvious traps. One of my lovely groups collected all of their data and then realized they had absolutely no speed data at all collected. They hadn't done anything with speed, despite the fact that one of the things they wanted to talk about was, um, sorry, they had no times and they wanted to calculate speed. So then they started again and that took a while. So so have them think and plan and do some really, really tight checks on um, what you expect them to have and then have that list prepared. We've already made our list of what we expect them to have so that we can just go through the checklist with them um, in that regard. So I think we did make a few, a few errors in our piloting of it last year, but um, but now I think it's a bit clearer that what is being assessed is the understanding and the processing of the data that they're getting from their experiment. And um, I think that will, yeah, I think that will work much better. On to you. All right, so we did the falling from space, which I don't actually think is on the website anymore, but the sort of basis behind it was it was, um, modelled around Felix Baumgartner throwing himself out of that cylinder at the edge of space and falling down, and you had to uh, explain the forces that were involved. Um, the whole setup of this was partially my fault, uh, um, a remembrance of a uh, prac GCSE practical we did looking at um, different types of oils and how fast uh, and their viscosity and how fast things fell down through them. I was like, oh, well, we don't really, we, our school is on, uh, it's only at one height. There is nowhere where we can be throwing parachutes off of any high places where we could get any decent measurements. So what can we do instead? So we decided to get some more paper paste, some nice big measuring cylinders and some uh, plasticine. <laughs> And our wallpaper paste was our atmosphere, uh, our plasticine was our mini Felix Baumgartner, and then they could um, try different uh, sizes of plasticine, different masses of plasticine, um, they could try dropping from different heights and work out the average speed, um, yeah. Um, as before, we provided them with a full template of the, everything they needed to do and they did all the, the, the planning for it and the method as a group. Um, they were not allowed to do the practical until we'd seen the method. And if the method was ropey, we'd sit down with the group and go, okay, this is not enough information. Talk me through it. And only when you were like, they had said, oh, and then we're going to repeat this. Oh, we're going to make sure the plasticine doesn't end up in the bottom by putting a bit of thread on it. You know, all those little, little things which make life easier, um, were they actually allowed to uh, do the practical, which is just as well because it was a messy, messy, messy practical, even when they all knew what they were doing. Um, it was quite the cleanup. <laughs> um, so some groups got some really excellent results and you could clearly see that there was a, a, a leveling off at, for terminal velocity and some groups didn't. And I think partially that was um, despite the fact that you were going stir the, the bucket of wallpaper paste before you take some out, that, that wasn't happening. So obviously it sort of separates out over time. Also, it separates out in their cylinder as well. So we had all these sticks and we're like, keep stirring it. We'll just empty it out, put some more in. It was um, so, but they all made it work in terms of um, 
getting some results that they could talk about. So because we'd done all the practice of how to do the writing and stuff, generally most groups were had their methods sorted by the end of the first lesson. We have our 20-minute lessons, so they're quite long. If they didn't, then they started the next lesson, finishing that off before they were allowed to do the practical. And then we had the uh, practical equipment for two lessons. Um, and then after that, once they'd got their results, they were allowed to talk to each other whilst they all got a copy of their results. And then after that, it was, you work in silence, you are focused on your work and your, your work alone. Everyone's got to draw their own graph and take a picture and put it into your report. Um, and from then on, it was not quite complete exam conditions because we said, oh, you can listen to music and stuff but they weren't allowed to sit and chat. They had to sit and quietly get on with their work. So they had three lessons in school to do that in, but we gave them an additional week before they had to hand it in. So if they wanted to finish some stuff off at home, they could do so. Um, we tended to go around and have a peer at all their graphs. And if there was like something or, and look at their data and just make comments like, are you sure? that doesn't really quite look right or that axis yeah you need to think about that you've missed something there you know just to make sure that they put units and things like that despite the fact that you've been shouting at them about it for the last six weeks um it was worthwhile to do that because then they had everything in front of them for the bit that was like the 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 big chunk of the marks which was the um sort of the conclusion evaluation the actual looking at um the forces involved and linking it back to um, their results. And I think that is where my kids fell apart. We actually, our moderation results came back pretty good. We had an E marks down to an M and then one M marks down to an A. And in both cases, um, Raymond had said he just wasn't happy that they had linked their personal results to their description of what was going on with the forces very well. So that's something we really need to sort of focus on this year. Um, but otherwise, yeah, he was pretty happy with what we got. I guess just that we were the same um, in that kind of feedback. It was very much, um, I think we were consistent with all of our achieves and all of our, uh, not achieves, achieves of merits. And it was that excellence of uh, linking that process data to those physics ideas and talking about their data specifically. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the trend line on the graph, so the processing of that, or um, the calculations that they had made, linking that back um, and their results to those ideas and using that as evidence to support their understanding. Yeah, because I, th I think... I was pretty happy with what the, everybody had written about the forces involved. Um, it's just, yeah, just some of them just didn't link it back to their own data. Yeah, and as I've said there, key learnings, we're not doing the wallpaper paste thing again. It was... Um, <laughs> but given that we have the opportunity to do what we fancy now, we would like the lockdown and slope worked really, really well as a practice. There's no reason why we can't do that as the real thing instead. So we're setting that up as our real thing. And we're doing, um, we are doing like a, a dropping bun cases as a practice instead. And we're sticking From with the highest well, point we have. <laughs> <laughs> we're sticking with the Wakahurua um, idea of that task with our land yachts um, because they were too good to not use at least twice. Um, so we're doing that task, but we're getting rid of pressure and um, talking about pressure on sales and um, that, that wasn't a starter. Um, so they're mostly going to be looking at speed, acceleration and forces um, to do with that and discussing how that changes and how their results are showing that change. Um, and we're still exactly figuring out what we're going to do around that. But that's our goal. Um, and I think that last point is just emphasizing as much as possible that process data being directly referred to linked to those physics ideas. And that is what they're looking for for excellence. 
as far as I can tell in that that's seemingly what my excellent students that I thought had done well hadn't done um, to the standard that was needed for moderation. Cool. We've got um, two questions in the chat that I'll interrupt with uh, before we kick over and start talking about externals. Um, the the SLOs that came out in January, as we, you will know, the interpretation of the standard was to attack it with two investigations. Did either of you approach it in that overt manner, or was your were your students investigating one thing and then extrapolating another relationship from that? We only obviously did one thing last year because that was what was necessary. We have discussed what we're going to encourage them to do this year, and we're going to encourage them to do calculations for speed, and then they can do two different change two different variables that will affect the speed, be that the um, the slope, the mass of the block, or uh, yeah. how far up the, the ruler it is. Um, so that's what we're going to encourage ours to do. Okay. Mm. Yeah, um, I think maybe just to clarify that, that the standard around this fact hasn't changed, but the interpretation of it did. So what was discussed with the pilot schools last year was essentially that they could do one investigation provided it had two relationships within that one investigation. So how right. we took that as a pilot school was with our walker, they were changing the sales. So one of the relationships that was changing was that area. And so the force hitting that area. So we had the relationship with pressure, let's call it, yeah. um, in that. And then we also had the fact that the speed was changing. They were accelerating differently. Right. Um, because that force was changing. So we had those two different Yeah, hard bases. makes and yeah, yeah, got you. Ideas. Yeah, yeah exactly. We talked about speed and force. Yeah. Yeah, because so in some was... cases they could extrapolate that second one rather than mm -hmm. like Julia was saying, overtly target it. Yeah. Exactly. So that was the interpretation last year, and that's not how those SLOs have been written to interpret it. Um they've pretty clearly been written that two investigations should be done. Um, and I'm not a physicist, so I take <laughs> the hat off to people who know better. Um, and yeah, we're going to look at changing the mass of our boats just by putting those yeah. regular little hanging yeah. weights on our boats It's so easy well. to do, isn't it, Emma? Yeah, it's so easy to take. And, yeah. and bring in that, that other variable. Cool. Okay, another question for you. Um, here's, here's a tricky one. I'll warn you now. Specifically for your experiments, what were the main or one main thing that st students did well for achieved or merit or excellence? You've already mentioned the excellence one, I think, is the overt tacking in of their process data. But what about for achieved and merit? I think the merit was just a really good understanding for us of the forces involved, being able to explain what terminal velocity was, why it was happening. Um, um literally for for the falling from the sky they just needed to kind of discuss what happens as you fall and talk about that friction relationship so i think that that and having that processed data as well showing showing that they can do the calculations so some of our kids just used time and i don't think any of the kids that just used time got above and achieved but um, those who then took that time and that distance and turned it into speed as well. So they just took that little bit extra and then had the graph to show with it as well. I think that was quite important, showing that they had done that additional data processing so that they could then discuss better what was going on. Cool. Yeah, I think essentially I'd agree with that exactly. Um, I felt that achieved and merit were big, pretty big, straightforward. Big yeah, but big gap between them as well. Yeah, they did the investigation, they had some data, and they could in some way explain what the physics was behind it. Um, they could tell me what speed was, that it was distance by time, and they could show me using their data that they could calculate that, and that the speed varied depending on the sail area, and you had a relationship in in pretty 
yeah, it was it was relatively straightforward to get a low achieved, I felt. And then that jump up is definitely process data and explaining what was going on yep. to a merit. Cool. Um, yeah. All right. Um, another one here. Uh, do the investigations have to be fair tests or can they be more explorative or observation type, if that makes any sense? Um, because the as Julia said, the classic physics old school thing is independent, dependent controls, hypothesis, yada, yada, yada. The old fair test model is what most people would call that. Are there alternatives is, I guess, the question. They um, did discuss alternatives, didn't they? Because they were like, oh, you can use videos and observational things. And then they started saying, but there's got to be processed data. There needs to be at least a table and a graph. And it was like, well, you've just said all these other things we can do. I can't see how we're going to be processing data and creating a graph unless we do fair testing and actually just do an all-scale investigation. Exactly. So yeah. in theory, I mean, yes, essentially... but I couldn't see how practically to do it. <laughs> it must be numerical data. So if you're gathering numerical data for physics concepts, generally speaking, you've got to be controlling the other things, um, which mm. I, I think heavily lends towards fair testing. Yeah. It was a very entertaining um, hour of our life, that arguing over what data mm. data processing was before lunch. Uh, the philosophy of that. It would drive you insane really quickly. Um, you mentioned you gave him a template, or at least one of you gave him a template. Somebody's asking, yeah. um, did you overtly give them instructions like you need to process your data and make a graph? Or... Yeah, we literally put here, put a table. Oh, here, raw data. Here, table. Here, graph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Here, uh, conclusion. Ex uh, here conclusion and explain the forces yeah here evaluation i did hear, I did hear both <laughs> of you say that you touched base with the kids repeatedly in those yeah. first few lessons of the assessment saying i mean i uh, want to think about this wanna, yeah show me your graph on your screen great show me your graph on your screen great so, <laughs> oh you don't have a graph what do you think you should do next uh -huh. yes. great good plan okay <laughs> Yeah. Like, there's a lot of it's right, that but... feedback loop that uh, that this assessment compared to the previous incantations mm. didn't have that's what i'm yes a absolutely lot of people say. um because i guess the difference is normally like for research and that they would hand it in you would read it and then give it back and say okay you need to focus on this you need to look at that you 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 need to expand on this because you you are allowed to give at least one well, uh, one feedback so this was literally just feedback as we were going along instead yeah. so as they were fixing finishing a section you were going oh just have a little look yeah, yeah. you're yeah. really in there aren't you like, you're you're really sure you that word? do you yeah. want to think about that again so you weren't saying this is what you need to put instead you were going that's not quite right. Go away and think about that and think yes. something else to write. Yeah. And the yeah. authenticity issue that you guys both brought up is really valuable. And that's going to be an interesting um, hurdle for everybody to deal with. So anyway, we better start talking about the external. Otherwise, we're going to run out of time. Yeah, I guess I'll just, just to touch on the authenticity. The graphing was definitely part of it, but so was the calculating. They A lot of the groups naturally put their table of raw data, which they were meant to be collecting, and they had distance and time, and then they just put sleep next and started doing their calculations as a group, just naturally. And so I'm literally going to say, no calculators. Like, I know you're on your computers, because you can gather your data, but no calculators. And if I write it on the board big enough this year, maybe they'll see it. <laughs> we'll see. But the idea that, yeah, just, just as a heads up, that was um, an issue last year too. Mm. Yeah, as they were packing away their equipment, I was going, okay, if you all copy, because they, they wrote their results on paper. I made them write their results on pieces of paper. I was like, has everyone got a copy of your results? Yeah, write it down on a piece of paper. Now sit down and I don't want you to talk to each other anymore. Mm. That's it. You're now, you're now working in silence. It's your work. Yeah. <laughs> right, 1.4. Ah, I'm going first. Um, so 
again, completely different from the previous year. Um, I think the, the main thing I took from it was this basics, basics, basics. Our kids just didn't know the basics. So uh, conduction, convection, radiation, yes, we took sort of touched upon it in 1.1 1 .1 and 1 1.3. So that's the Earth Space Science um, assessments. Um, but still, when it came down to it, I needed to go right back and talk about states of matter because they might have done it in year nine, but it's long since gone. And if you're doing thermal physics, you need to start there. Otherwise, they're like, no, I don't get it. Don't know, don't know what you're talking about. So do the whole bit, cooling curves, get some ice, heat it up, make them draw a graph. Now tell me what's going on. And then you can sort of link it to the energy concepts as you're going along. Electricity. Again, we have now built electricity into our junior program. But last year, it, whether or not they did electricity in year 10 entirely depended on the teacher because it was the thing thrown in after the assessment at the end of the year. So half the kids have never done any electricity. So we had to start right at the back, right at the basics. What is this? Okay, how can we plug it into this? What happens when we plug it in? And then we just did circuits. We did series circuits, parallel circuits. Okay. And then did on the board, if the voltage is this here, what is it going to be here? So really it had to go right back to basics with all this stuff and start from scratch. We did energy transformations um, and talked about conservation of energy before we did our practical so that they could talk about the energy transformations as part of their explaining what was going on and indeed some of them did which was excellent so they had done that but we hadn't done any of the calculations that went with it so we sort of added the calculations on afterwards. Um, I put a couple of good experiments there that they were either uh, the insulated beaker competition, they always love that. You give them a beaker, give them some boiling water and give them the random stuff. And you go, OK, insulate it. Then you've got to time it for 10 minutes and see how much the temperatures drop by. We give prizes for best design and most effective. And when you're timing it, you've got to sit there and you've got to explain how you're stopping conduction, how you're stopping convection, how you're stopping radiation. What is it that you've put in your design to stop those things? And if it's really, really bulky, then you lose points because we want thin and effective. Um, we literally, when we were doing thermal physics, we got them to calculate the latent heat of water by sticking a bit of wire in water and plugging it into a power pack. So that was really good because it meant that they could... Uh, time how long they're heating it for, Time how, uh, look at how much the temperature had gone up by, and then they could look at the voltage and the current um, across that little bit of wire. They could work out the power, then they could work out the energy and work back that way. So they were linking electrical energy uh, um, to thermal energy. Um, it was actually surprisingly effective. Our power packs didn't like it very much, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but we have very old workhorse power packs. So we just found the oldest ones, which were less likely to trip, <laughs> and they did, did the job. Um, um, just generally, our kids uh, by this point of the year are quite disengaged. A lot of them have already got their credits. They're not very interested. Um, so with some of our kids, it was quite hard to motivate them to get behind this. So we tried to make this as practical as possible to so that it's hands on and kept going, well, you've done the work, you might as well turn up to the exam. Although some of the kids after they saw the exam were very, very unhappy with me for saying that. Um, as for the resources, I basically, uh, for the thermal physics stuff, I just fell back on all the thermal physics stuff I had from teaching international GCSE and just used all the old questions there, just rejig them, reuse them, um, uh, because obviously there's not anything recent here because it's not been part of um, part of uh, level ones. Um, and then, yeah, for the energy and stuff, just looks at the old level one stuff and use that for uh, practice questions and things. We, I personally made quite a lot of 
sort of starter questions where we worked between the different energy types and calculated through. So I don't know, looking at a lift, okay, it's uh, working out gravitational potential energy, then working from that kinetic energy, then looking at how much energy was the motor producing, um, yeah, and then working that back to, okay, how powerful was the motor? Okay, what voltage was the motor? So working all the way through really sort of multi-stage questions like that to, to really hammer home to them that they're going to mix and match. And, oh, look, energy is all energy. Remember, it's just moving from one to the other. So, okay, we talked about kinetic energy there. That's the same as the gravitational energy up here. So link it together. Uh, yeah. Cool. And um, yeah, we found it quite the rush to um, fit in this content once we finally got our heads around it in the pilot um, teacher meetings. Um, so it was a bit of a push, um, but we have made a whole lot of changes. Um, last year, we taught the 1.4 content. We taught the mechanical energy part with 1.2 physics assessment learning, um, but we taught the thermal energy and electrical energy at the end of the year, and that was a lot um, and a lot of calculating and a lot of number heavy stuff. Um, and our students found it really, really challenging. And um, same issue as Julia, particularly around states of matter. Um, they think they know it all because it's solid liquid gas and of course they're not solid liquid gases and then they can't remember the word sublimation and they actually have absolutely no idea what's going on at particle level and particle theory is accessible here is essentially um, is essential to the standard so we've um we've moved particle thermal energy and particle theory into our s1.1 um earth system unit which we're just wrapping up in term one now leading into um, the human-induced change assessment. And that has been really cool to teach convection in the Earth's crust and um, thermal energy and ice melting in the water cycle and um, latent heat and how puddles evaporate at room temperature. Um, all of that kind of stuff, making it really contextualised, um, has taken a little bit longer than we thought it would for our teaching unit, but it's um, it's worked really well and the kids have been really engaged in knowing that they were learning some stuff at the end of the year, but in context for the upcoming internal. Um, so it's working quite well so far. And then we're putting all of the mechanical energy stuff into the 1.2 forces in motion sort of mechanics unit, which we'll teach in term two. And then we're going to teach electricity as its final sort of unit in preparation in term three um, and link that to that mechanical energy and thermal energy, as Julia has already mentioned. Um, there are so many cool practicals. We also um, use circuits to heat water and calculate specific heat capacity. Um, that was pretty cool. And... Um, I spent probably like three hours freezing 30 thermometers inside cubes of ice in um, beakers. I think I broke about seven beakers trying to get the ice out of them. My tech was not super pleased with me, but um, but we, yeah, we did heating curves from negative 14 degrees, our deep freeze at school, and they got really, almost every group got a really solid pause at zero before the temperature started to go up again. Um, and then we could talk about latent heat and specific heat capacity and um, make those links to what they've actually done. And then, of course, all the normal mechanic energies lab, um, ball and ramp, balloon poppers, whatever it is that you want to be talking about. There's, um, there's a lot to do in, um, in there. Um, I think we've got some stuff on the external on the page maybe, but in our HUI meetings, we had lots of discussions about how the exam questions would really interweave the, I guess, the three types of energy. It's kind of split into three kinds. And so um, resource-wise, um, the team of three teachers for this, um, the three class teachers for the pilot, um, we, we kind of <laughs> kind of killed ourselves writing and practice exam questions that 
super integrated um the toy cad that's pulling a ball ball up a um up, a, up onto the table and it's attached to a string and some kind of levering system all these scenarios and had them practice and i guess it's worked out because we got pretty good results from this um for our kids which is great but the exam itself wasn't super super connected there were mentions between the different kinds but it was pretty much a mechanics question a electricity question and a thermal question and that was yeah. just a little bit disappointing after we'd tried to integrate so write our own integrated questions but um we've linked in nzqa has the standard and the mark schedule sorry the assessment and the mark schedule from last year so there is that model um i, I don't feel this has changed particularly much from last year julia do you have any comment on that no i don't think so i think the main thing is now we actually know exactly what we're supposed to be teaching whereas last year we were making assumptions all over the place i mean at no point did it say anything about states of matter it just went thermal physics and use this equation and we went oh well, what do you need to know before you can even use that equation and that was pretty much i don't know how you based your teaching we literally looked at the equations and went okay well if we're using these equations these are the things that the kids need to know going into this exam and so we sort of backed it from the equations and speaking about the equations, um, some of the uh, um, letters they used for um, for things were very confusing. So I, old school, looking at thermal physics, used Q for thermal energy, and then they've got E. So we've used all this stuff, and we've used Q, and then luckily uh, one of my teachers got hold of the formula sheet and went, uh, have you seen this? This is not necessarily what how we've been presenting it to them. So we gave them all a copy of the formula sheet and we spent like the first half of the lesson going through everything and going, okay, this formula is the same as this formula we've been using. And this is what each of these letters actually mean. Write them down, learn them. Um, so yeah, definitely be aware of that as a potential problem. Yeah, we thought so I don't well. know if they're going to fix that. <laughs> But yeah, there was there were things in there that were surprising. Um, like they used the term mechanical energy in the first question. Now I'd not not used terminology like that since I did GCSE. So I was like, oh shit. <laughs> the kids might not know necessarily what that meant. And just generally, 1B was horrific. So 1A was really nice. Uh, you've thrown a ball up in the air, what are the energy transformations? Beautiful. Nice, easy start. 1B then went, um, work out the force of friction. Start by showing that um, you've lost this much from the mechanical energy during the drop. Yeah, that was like a four-step calculation and a level one exam like in question 1B. For this, yeah, for the second question, and that was all they got. There was There wasn't any any anything else beyond that start by and as a result i had a whole blo bunch of boys come to me afterwards and went i looked at question one miss and i was just like no i can't do this so i left as soon as i could it was absolutely evil start and probably the most conv convoluted question because it was really given that they used terminology that they hadn't even come across before I suspect quite a lot of my kids didn't even know where to start, to be honest. Um, so, yeah, that was evil. And then there was this question about if you're heating things up, what happens to the volume? Well, I've not talked about gas laws. I mean, obviously, we've talked about how if you heat things up, uh, the particles take up more space, but not in really explicit terms like that. And I was like, oh, should we? Should we be doing theory behind gas laws? That's that had never come up as a question before either. So it was like, well, that that's a little unfair. The, you're making assumptions there that they can realise that there's that's those are those links because we've not explicitly taught that. But I would say generally it's the same problem that maths have that we had in the physics, which was if you could understand the questions, generally it was quite straightforward. I reckon we had a lot of kids that didn't even understand what the questions were asking them in the first place. 
And part of that was we had nothing. We had no practice question. Well, we had one practice question from them and it was pretty bad and nothing else. We literally begged for a, a paper, a sample paper, and we got nothing. So we went in completely blind. Yeah, it was, it was trying, shall we say. Trying might be one way to put it. Um, yeah, the, the, wording, the wording made it quite challenging. So we'll um, see how that goes with the next exam paper. Um, but I think particle theory is probably something that we – we taught a bit of, but we've put a much bigger emphasis on teaching this year um, and looking at how energy transfers to and from particles are affecting their movement and therefore their volume. Um, that temperature is an average amount of thermal energy um, so that some particles will have more, some will have less. There's, there's a lot underlying those formula that are provided in the standard and in the exam they're given all formula um there's a lot of learning that underlies those um and i think the one that we i put it on the slide somewhere in the middle there that work is a change transfer of energy of course we told them that and we talked about work quite a lot but we didn't quite expect the like the whole question three parts on work equals force over distance relating that to energy directly um i don't know why we didn't expect that in hindsight that probably should have been expected but um but we're doing making sure that we're really focusing that work is a transfer of energy and we're gonna start many lessons by saying okay what is work a transfer of energy <laughs> good old good old chanting just to make sure it sticks in their brains mm -hmm. and many kids come out why did they keep asking us about forces like whoa okay we're fine <laughs> we're fine guys <laughs> yeah um cool any questions uh we've got one here about i think you've sort of answered this already about the overlap of the content for 1.4 uh one of you mentioned that it sort of fit inside the the pess 1.1 a little bit but to overlap the 1.2 and the 1.4 you said you used mechanics to do that basically the the mechanics of a teacher planning a year with a certain number of weeks and how you actually played that puzzle game yeah i think hopefully at green bay we've played it better this year um so far it's taking longer than we planned and we're not quite sure how the whole year is going to go mm. but um but yeah we're looking we're, we're still running a piss course um yeah. so we're doing 1.1 to 1.4 and we've um broken up that external energy content into units that fit within our other units. Um, yeah. So that's um, that's how we're linking those together. Um, same with still running a PES course as well, so 1.1 1 .1 to 1.4. Last year we did 1.1, we did 1.2, then we did 1.3, and then we did 1.4 but we had done some of the learning for 1.4 and 1.2 and a little bit in 1.1. And there was a little bit of overview on 1.3 as well with the thermal stuff. Um, this year we are starting with the 1.2 because it's a lot more practical uh, because they very much more enjoy that assessment because of the practicality with it. So this year we're going 1.2, doing some of the, then moving on and doing some um, quite a lot of the learning for 1.4. Then we're going to do 1.3 and then uh, be prepared to do the 1.3 as soon as it comes out in term three. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to finish off 1.4 and do 1.1 as sort of the last thing. So those kids that, that still want those credits, they can do the 1.1. If those kids that are like, oh, I'm all over it, they can do some revision for 1.4 and be more prepared for 1.4 instead. So I'm not hearing either of your schools have decided to pull back a bit and only run three standards instead of four. No. Well, 
So the idea there is that we're really pushing those first three, the 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1 and then the 1.1, we will run it. But it, what I suspect will happen is we will have a fair amount of kids that are just like, nah, I don't need this, I'm not going to do it. Gotcha. Because we do have that drop off right at the end at level one. If they've got the credits, we it's a big problem that we have is that once the kids have got their credits, they're just like, nah. Yeah, totally. No, My school it's... runs it quite differently because our P course and our BIC course are double science, basically for opt-in students that want to do extra science. Hmm. So we still definitely have a drop-off that's not near as significant as our general science courses. Hmm. So um, we are running... 1.3, this year in order again, um, but integrating that learning a lot more. Um, mm. I guess as a comment, we're running, we're changing our general science course um, that has been piloting the science 1.1 to 1.4s. They aren't doing 1.3 the features of science paper this year. That's the end of year external. Mm -hmm. Instead, they're going to do PS 1.2, um, the physics investigation as well as the investigation portfolio science one point two. Yeah. Um so they're running both of those in the general science course. So three internal assessments and then one external the um science claims validity of information standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we decided this year to keep it the same as last year just because we knew that there was going to be changes to Cambio again. Um, and we weren't sure what changes, again, there would be to pairs, so it just seemed sensible. So our, our kids have to choose at least one science, and we do NOS, ChemBio, and PEZ. Um, some of them do two, um, so that's how we are at the moment. But we are looking at next year at doing a science course with uh, one from chemistry, one from bio, one from physics, and then um, either an, a, a, a space science standard or a NOS standard. Yeah. And then maybe running an additional additional science course for those who want to do more, again, with another one each of those um, core science assessments. Yeah, that's a... It's, but we're not sure yet. We're, no, we're we have a common package in a lot of schools that didn't have the restrictions that you had as a pilot school. Mm -mm. Yeah, exactly. But we were just we weren't prepared to make those changes, knowing how oh. big the changes had been year on year so far. We were like, "Now nice, just leave it. We'll see yeah. what happens, and if it's settled down, yeah. we'll think about that for next year." And, and also, to be honest, I'm done with course creation. Course creation. Like exactly. I've created a course. We did it last year. Yeah. I need a bit of a break. <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just imagine if level two was happening on the timeline they wanted. Oh. Yes. Well, All right. Level one well, did it. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody is mentioning in the chat how it's amazing how you guys manage the pilot year with such little um, feedback resources for the 1.4. Um, we have no resources, quite really. It's quite astounding, <laughs> the, the trials that you guys went through. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was a year. It was a year. <laughs> well, if anybody has any more questions, um, Julie, you can stop sharing your screen so you can see anybody who wants to flick on their camera or people actually want to voice anything. Otherwise, um, I will thank you um, on behalf of everybody who is either listening currently or will listen to this at a later date. Um, it's an amazing uh, roller coaster that you guys have been riding. And you've learned along the way with um, some support, not much, not as much as you needed. Um, and you guys have, you know, bashed through the other side. So that's impressive. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, yes, we were building the plane whilst we were trying to fly it. That's <laughs> how I would describe the pilots. 